back to Astori Apothecary. This is Astori and we are here for another making video. Today we're going to be making the whipped soap base formula. Um, that formula can be found in my shop. There'll be a link in the description box below for the actual formula. But today I'm just going to show you how to make it. And it is pretty simple. Um, I will also be showing you how I take my base and turn it into a um, foaming sugar scrub but there are other things that you can do with it you can use it as is as a just a whipped soap make it into like a shaving type soap or um, add some other ingredients to it and use it for something like a face cleanser you can do different things with it but I specifically use it to make foaming sugar scrubs which I absolutely love so I will show you how I take the base and turn it into um, foaming sugar scrub and that information is also available in the formula so basically you get kind of two formulas in one I give you the base formula for the base and then I also give you the um, percentages to do or that I like to use for foaming sugar scrub so I'm gonna go ahead and get started I've got my pot already and I am gonna be using my heat plate to warm it up um, for your warming you can use your crock pot you can use a double boiler um, I'm just gonna do direct heat if you're doing direct heat you want to keep a great eye on it a close eye on it so that nothing scorches but one of the ingredients that we'll be using sodium cocoa isothionate does take a while to melt and so I don't like using a double boiler especially if I'm making a large amount if I'm making a small batch that's not that bad but for me I'm usually making a good amount at once and I like to do it over direct heat so let's go ahead and get started don't mind any noises you may hear in the background and that is baby girl she is in here with me sleeping so we'll see how this goes <laughs> all right i am gonna go ahead and get started all right so the very first ingredient that we'll be adding will be our distilled water always want to use distilled water in any of your skincare formulations it has been specially treated to remove as many metals and extra stuff that you don't want that can actually react with your preservative or other ingredients and cause issues you don't want any of that so we always use distilled water um and like i said this is just for the base so basically we're going to be mixing all of our base ingredients together melting it down and then um once it's melted blending it and then letting it sit and harden it's going to be like the bath butters that you see from other companies but you made it yourself at a cheaper price and i actually went a little over so let me take out a little bit of that. I was not paying attention. Um, I'm just making a smaller batch, so I don't need a lot. And remember, once you whip it up, you'll have more than what you um, use for your base. So like for me, I'm making 32 ounces, and I know that's will actually make quite a bit once I whip it up and add my sugar and all that to it. Something that I like to do, I have all of my ingredients out next to me once I use them. I will go ahead and put them away. That way I know I've added it and it clears out my space. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that away. So that is my water, whoops. And my next ingredient is going to be my Cocomito Purple Betaine. This is a um, surfactant one of the cleansing ingredients. This helps to add mildness to your recipe. Um, when you're using any other surfactant, this adds mildness, it boosts foam. Um, it has just a lot of great properties. So let me go ahead and add that. I use cocoa betaine in pretty much any recipe that I have a surfactant in. I use it as a co-surfactant. I've never, I don't use it on its own. Um, but I always use it in my recipes that have other surfactants just to help again with mildness and um, boosting foam. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and add in my SCI noodles. And SCI, whether it's noodles, powder, flake, do they have flakes? Pastilles, I know they have some other version. Um, is a very airborne ingredient and anything airborne can get into your lungs and make you cough and get into your mucous membranes make you sneeze you don't want that that's not good for you to breathe it in so i do recommend a particle mask which i will link um the one that i use below but there are 
plenty you can go to the hardware store anything that they use for when they cut wood or anything like that is something that you could use I also use one um, for when I mix my lye so I have one that works for particles and for fumes because the lye fumes are also very dangerous to breathe in um, so do as I say not as I do because it'll be easier for me to talk without my mask on but I'm gonna keep my face away from the pot as I pour this in and thankfully because there's noodles and I've already put in my cocoa betaine in my water it will moisten it and help it not be quite so airborne if you're using powder you definitely want to wear a mask until you have it moistened and it's been incorporated into your liquid and so it won't be so airborne so I'm going to go ahead and add in my SCI SCI of course is another surfactant it is our bubbling agent it is um, also known as baby foam, so it is a very, very gentle surfactant. Like I said, it's what's used in a lot of baby um, products. I'm trying to see. Okay. So yeah, you may find it under the name baby foam just because of how gentle it actually is. And this is going to be what helps us be able to add any nice oils or anything to this after we whip it up and it won't um, lose all of its foaming abilities as we know when you add oils to something that has <coughs> soap it um, reduces the lather but SCI helps to keep the lather I'm trying to make sure I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up, but you can see some of the powder coming up. I mean, not the powder, the, well, it looks like smoke, but it's not smoke. You don't want to breathe that in. All right, so we've got our SCI mixed in, and I'm going to grab a spatula. I thought I was prepared. Oh, well, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to use this just to kind of wet that down. All right. And honestly, we are almost done. We only have a couple more ingredients. So next we're gonna add our stearic acid. Now stearic acid is what is gonna help keep this nice and firm, keep it stable, thicken it, and give it that um, butter texture that you may be used to from other companies. And you don't need a lot to get that consistency. And I need to hurry up because it looks like my battery is dying on my scale. All right, so that was stearic acid. And then next to last ingredient is going to be glycerin. Glycerin is going to help with the skin feel. We are using surfactants, which can still, even though they clean, of course, they can be drying because they're going to pull all the oil, no matter whether it's your skin or dirt. They're going to pull the oils from your skin. So... We add some glycerin to help with that. This is gonna draw moisture to the skin and just help make it more moisturizing. When you use the base, you can add other ingredients to continue to add to that moisturizing feel, but this gives it a head start. Right. All right, so I'm just gonna stir that together and then the next part is just heating this up. You want to melt down that stearic acid and the SCI. Um, for the SCI, you can use the powder, you can use whatever form that you would like. Um, the powder is going to probably melt a little bit easier. I just like the noodles because I also use the noodles in other projects, so I have noodles. I actually have powder as well, but I like the noodles for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the heat and let that melt down and I'll bring you down. But bleh. Sorry, I will bring you back <laughs> when it is all melted. And like I said, just keep an eye on it. You can occasionally stir it as it is melting. The SCI will take a little bit if you're using the noodles. It will take a little bit of time, so just keep an eye on it. Steric acid also will take a little bit of time. I'm using very tiny um, granules, so it doesn't take as long, but just 
keep an eye on it and we'll be back when everything is all melted for the next set all right so i just wanted to bring you back for a quick update so you can see kind of how it is looking melted let's see it's not very light so you can't really see it down in there but it is starting to become more like a paste or a gel and it is clear on the bottom and kind of milky not even milky lightly white on the top it's not quite melted yet I can still see SCI noodles in there I'm just stirring it up and I'm gonna put it back on the heat and bring you back when it is completely melted I did want to mention um, this is just the base formula so when you make the next step which can be your scrub or however you want to do that you can customize it um, but if you wanted to do that before this step say you know you're about to make a big batch of a turmeric scrub you could actually add turmeric powder into the base um, I would say maybe no more than 1% and I would take that 1% away from the SCI powder and then that way you've already got your base started with your turmeric um, you could take away a little bit of the glycerin or the SCI and add in a little bit of oil um, or you could replace some of the distilled water with like aloe juice or a hydrosol but for me I just make my base and then I customize my additional ingredients after I'm done with the base but I just wanted to let you know that you could customize it that way as well I'm gonna put that back on the heat and let that get back to um, melting and be back in a few minutes all right we are back everything is melted so i'm going to take this off of the heat and it just looks like an off-white slightly thick liquid and that's exactly what we want there's no pieces of sci or stearic acid still moving around in there everything is nice and melted and thinned out so if you use a vessel that can handle being having a stick blender used in it and you don't have to do this step i'm going to turn this off but this is a non-stick pot and i don't like to use my stick blender in it just in case the blades were to scrape the non-stick coating i do not recommend a non-stick pot this is just what I had <laughs> um, stainless steel for sure um, so I'm gonna actually pour this into this bucket here this will also help with cooling it down we want to cool it down to whatever temperature is appropriate for the preservative that you're using for what I'm using liquid Germal plus it needs to be under under 122 degrees so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this into this container and then we will measure the uh, Check the temperature. Move this over a little bit. And there you can see the consistency is just slightly thickened. Uh -oh. just getting everything out of the pot because we don't waste anything and even that little bit that was in the bottom of the pot is cooling off and already starting to thicken up so you do want to hit it with the stick blender pretty quickly after you um, take it off of the heat because it will start thickening up pretty quickly the SCI also helps with the thickening of it um, as well as the stearic acid and let's see, I think that is good. So if you see, just this little bit um, is already turning into that paste. So I'm gonna put that back down in there and stick blend this really quickly. I 
am going to check the temperature and then let it sit a little bit, come back and blend it some more. And basically just keep an eye on it again until it gets to the temperature that I need it to be. Um, I don't know if you can see down in there, but it is gonna eventually get a nice white color as it cools. It's already getting more opaque. You can't really see through it like you could before and that's what you want. You want everything to be nice and blended together. And that may take a couple of blends. It's still kind of hot right now, so let's check the temperature. All right, we're at about 160. That's Fahrenheit, which is 71 degrees Celsius. And I am going to just let this sit here for a little bit. Once again, come back and mix it again. And once it reaches the proper temperature for my preservative, add in my preservative, mix it up, and let it cool the rest of the way until we are ready for our next step, which will be tomorrow for me. It'll be just a few minutes for you guys. <laughs> All right, we are back and it is finally cool enough and I'm gonna try to see if I can get, it's got a little bit of a crust on the top. Okay, that's a bad word, a film on the top. That's all it cooling down and starting to harden. That's all that is, there's nothing wrong with it. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. So it's a lot thicker now and the sides are cooling off. So I'm getting the chunks on the side as well all of that is exactly what we want and I am just scraping that down so that when I add my preservative I can get it mixed into all of this and not just what's in the middle here but yeah as it sticks to the side it's gonna cool really really fast alrighty so we're gonna go ahead and add in our preservative which I need to bring my scale back I don't know if this scale can handle this much. Let's see. Oh, looks like it can. Alrighty. So again, I'm, I'm using uh, Liquid Germal Plus. It only needs 0.5%, such a small amount, which I love. It is a water-soluble preservative. Um, let's see, and it is broad spectrum, which means that it covers everything from yeast mold and bacteria which is what we want in any product that has water in it and this product will probably be in showers or humid bathrooms steamy bathrooms so we want to protect it well we want to protect our customers or and our or our, if ourselves if we're just making it for ourselves but we want to protect our customers we don't want anything to grow and cause any issues so that is mixed in and it is cooling off a lot so it is thickening up i'm going to hit it with the stick blender the last time and that's just to make sure that the preservative is fully incorporated and then i am going to cover this and let it sit overnight to um, completely cool and it will harden up um when i cover it because it is still warm condensation can still form if I was to cover it with say like a plastic wrap or a lid or aluminum foil. So I am going to actually put a paper towel over the top um, and let that be how I cover it. That way nothing will drop into it, but any of the condensation that may uh, um, accumulate from the heat rising and it cooling off will go into the paper towel instead of back down into our product. You don't want that to happen because what is um, collecting on the top from condensation is not preserved and you don't want that unpreserved water falling back into your product. It will cause mold on the top. I have actually seen or not seen it, but had that happen to me before covering a product. The very next day, I was letting it cool. The very next day, it had mold on top and I realized that that was the reason why. Not a happy day for me. <laughs> anyways i'm gonna stick blend this really quick because it is thickening up quite quickly now that i've added that preservative that cooled it down quite significantly 
that as I can but it is starting to cool off so it is getting nice and firm I love making this it's actually a really quick process and then you have a base that you can use just like you would use any of the commercial um, bases you add your sugar maybe a little extra oil when you do add your sugar and any other um, additives you do need to add a little bit more preservative um, and then mix and go whip it up it whips nicely it holds its shape it stays stable as long as you don't over whip any product if you over whip it it's going to deflate um, so I don't whip it any more than maybe about eight to ten minutes all together and I have some that I have left in 80 degree room, um, some that I have in my shower where my shower is extremely humid. I do put the lid back on it after I use it, but I put it in there on purpose to kind of test all of that out. Um, I have shipped to cooler and warmer areas, all of these different things, and it has remained stable as long as you don't over whip it. And you'll see what's on the side here is already nice and white and getting nice and firm and it's not even all the way cool yet so that is basically that um i'm going to like i said let this sit and come back when i am ready to make some foaming sugar scrubs and i will show you how i make my foaming sugar scrub and again the formula for the whip soap base includes the formula for um a foaming sugar scrub so you have two in one with this one. I don't know why I like stirring it so much. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to <laughs> stop stirring it and go ahead and put it to the paper towel and let it finish cooling. So like I said, I will see you all tomorrow. It'll be a few minutes for you though. Okay, welcome back. Unfortunately, I have to do a voiceover because in between the making of the first part and the second part, a water leak was discovered in my workspace. And so I had to move a bunch of things around and there is a blower going that is drying a certain section of the room. It was a lot going on. Half of my supplies and everything were not even in the room anymore. Anyway not important. Right now, I am just showing mixing up my base with some additional oil, um, my fragrance, I'm going to add color, and then you'll eventually see me measure out my sugar and also my preservative. You'll see that first I measured out the, my percentage of my base and I let that whip up. And then I'm going to add in my um i measured out the oil and i also put my fragrance in there with the oil and i went ahead and put my color in to that oil part and i'm going to add my preservative as well everything is room temperature so i don't have to worry about it being too hot or anything like that but i do like to break up my um, whip soap base before i add in the other ingredients just to get it kind of fluffy and get it started um, so I did that again um, like I mentioned in the first part I don't like to whip it more than mm, at the most maybe like eight minutes something like that so I let it get kind of nice and fluffy you know double in size if you've ever made a meringue or whipped cream it's similar to that not quite the same but similar so I'm going ahead and I'm measuring out my sugar here and I'm just using regular granulated sugar. You could substitute a portion of the sugar percentage for, say, coffee granules if you wanted to make a coffee um, 
uh, whipped soap. I would not suggest doing 100% coffee and I would only use a little bit because coffee is not soluble in water. So that's going to go down the drain. You don't want to be adding a bunch of stuff that's not going to, um, you know, that's not going to solubilize. Um, and then I'm going ahead and I'm mixing in the oils and preservative and colorants. Now, this is a white base, so it is going to give you a more pale color unless you add a lot of color. So keep that in mind. Um, but I do find that color deepens a little bit over time. Um, so also keep that in mind, at least in my experience. But like I said, you could substitute for maybe like a pumice powder or, well, not a powder, but, you know, pumice or, um, maybe even use a sea salt instead of a granulated sugar. Um... Basically anything that is abrasive you can add, but again, just keep in mind that not everything is going to dissolve in water. And so anything that's not soluble in water is just going to go down the drain. So again, I've added in all of my ingredients, whipped everything up to get it all incorporated. In fact, this batch, I kind of whipped a little bit too long for my liking. That's something you're going to have to experiment with because it's also going to depend on your area, how humid it is, your temperature, all those types of things, the type of oil that you use. It, say if you decide to use like a hard butter instead of a liquid oil, which you can do, it's going to change the texture a little bit. It's going to make it firmer, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's something that you're going to want to experiment with. And that's why I love making formulas as opposed to a recipe and telling you only use this thing unless it serves a specific purpose. I like to give it, give you the option to customize it to your liking but I always say you know test out a small batch four ounces not a big batch test it out to get maybe the consistency that you want or the look that you want because it may not come out the way you want um, immediately so right now I'm just piping it into my jars I like to use a piping bag you can put a tip on it anything that you want to do you can spoon it in however you want to do it so that is basically it. Thank you so much for watching. Again, the formula can be found down in the description box below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, like this video, and make sure you subscribe.